without further ado let me now introduce our guest speaker so dr nirmal ranjit devasiri so nirmal may i ask you to switch on your yeah thank you so for those of you who do not know nirmal he is a trained historian from universities of colombo and universities of leiden in netherlands and his research interests include historiography and ethnonationalist ideologies and post colonial state formation around, among other, other things but i would like to introduce nirmal as how i know him and he has been a pioneer in bringing together the two departments of uh, history in jaffna university and colombo university after 30 years of war and uh, disconnect together and he has been a pioneer in linking these two departments up again so i think that contribution is something that i really appreciate about nirmal uh, so welcome nirmal and thank you for joining us today yeah thank you thank you ajin for having me it's really pleasure to you know engage in this yeah. conversation with you and yes so i will i will also start uh, sharing your presentation um and I want to ask the first question that i have as your topic um why 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 do we have to start thinking about historical myths when we are talking about quote unquote teaching history well uh, so uh, i mean why is it it is important to uh, uh, discuss about you know the i mean contemplate on myths is like you know asking the question why it is important to uh, understand language right so you know the uh, i mean since i mean everyone is quite convinced as to why we have to learn we have to study we have to be serious about language because we know that it is through language that we communicate we we understand we we think our 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 thought process operates through the medium of uh, language i mean the same explanation can be given uh, to the myths because you know the myth is you know it it, it is uh, i mean it, it, that's how uh, the i mean classical thinkers of uh, uh, mythology the you know, i mean thinkers like uh, uh, levi strauss claud levi strauss understood myth you know they i mean they like it's like language right so the, therefore so the uh, myths not only i'm not necessarily referring to the historical myth but you know in general so myth is a form in which through which we understand certain uh, things that exist outside us right so the i mean a medium through which we make sense of things right so the uh, this is particularly important uh, in the realm of historical knowledge because you know the one of the important aspects of historical knowledge you know it is something that you know uh, that there is a there is a distance between us and the historical uh, the phenomena right i mean they they do not they do not exist in front of us for example compare the historical phenomenon and you know kind of contemporary phenomenon like you know if you want to study the traffic congestion in colombo so you can face to face you know that you can go to the city and experience it right but you know the but 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 uh, if you are if you try to understand the early settlement formation of sri lanka so that's different from it you know the they do not exist you know uh, before you right so there there is a there's a temporal you know not only spatial difference but also temporal uh, time related difference and so therefore i mean this is where this mythification as i uh, would give you you know uh, i mean explain a bit more later 
is important because you know the myths is a kind of uh, language i would say that that we are using um, in making sense of uh, you know things including uh, historical uh, phenomena mm -hmm. so let me again ask uh, to explain a little bit further about the difference between historical myth now you were talking about generally what myth is about but what's the difference between historical myth and history are there are these two distinct categories what is the difference yeah let's uh, let's approach in this way so the i mean uh, when you are talking about history so you can ask to what history mean you know what what, what is history right so the history is something that you know the, i mean uh, there is a famous uh, thinker called johann hausinger so he according to him the i mean history is something that you know the i mean uh, uh, it refer to the way in which a particular culture try to make sense of their past right so the we are we are trying to uh, so the, we know that you know the, we cannot forget the past right so we cannot you know the i mean so we are sort of we are linked to our past we have a we have something called uh, memory you know the we remember certain things we remember you know the personally we remember our you know the young days and all kind of things right and then we have a knowledge that you know coming down from you know through our ancestors and all that right so that we inherit certain you know the memory right so the so the i mean human beings it's a very much part of uh, our human existence that you know the, we deal with the past and so the history refer to the way in which the the people communities cultures uh make sense of become conscious of the, their past right then what is myth myth is a medium right so myth is a medium it is like you know as i said it's a is a kind of language you know that i mean like we have you know number of various languages we have you know chinese japanese english tamil and all kind of languages like you know it's also the myth also i mean so it's about you know the which tradition of myth that we choose right so uh, so therefore so the the myth that this mythification cannot be avoided so then i mean this statement would raise a lot of problems so then can't we you know uh, i mean can't we avoid myths and so on let's let's let, let's come to uh, exactly. later but uh, did i ask you uh, the answer your question i mean uh, the, the yes yes to a certain degree yeah. yes but you uh, also talking about the popular understanding of Uh, a historical myth um, and uh, about fact. What is the difference between myth and fact, as you have uh, indicated here? In yeah, yeah. So that, that uh, I mean, if you go to the, uh, if you go to the, um, uh, you know, slides. Uh, which one? This uh, the one on this uh, Dupagamunu thing. Where, where they go to the next slide, please. Oh, uh, yeah. Well. you know the, i mean let, let's uh, let's look at this right the i mean uh, the one uh, with dutugamunela warfare uh, so the i mean the general understanding is that so we we have a kind of we have a kind of negative attitude towards myth right so we think that you know the myth is something that has to be discarded and so on right and and also the if you say or oh, if i say that you know this particular event you know i mean uh, we know that you know this quite a familiar uh, this particular uh, visual representation may be new but you know that we know this you know due to the warfare so if i say uh, this has uh, indeed happened many times if i say this is a myth so there may be lot of questions mark lot of a uh, lot of uh, or you say a um, uh, lot of you know my my claim may be challenged by those who would argue that well this is not a myth you know there are there is a factual basis there's an empirical basis 
So there are historical evidence, there are historical sources to prove that Dutuga Munu actually existed and so on, right? By doing so, the, uh, the my claim, Dutuga Munu Elara story to be mythical would try to be questioned, right? So that is something that, you know, that we have to understand. That's not what I'm saying, right? The fact that Dutuga Munu might have uh, lived as a historical persona does not say that it is not a myth. The, I mean, likewise, for example, we we all we all know that you know. Uh, I mean, let's take for example, uh, let's say the Rohana Vijayvira or uh, you know Prabhakaran, you know Velupille Prabhakaran or. Uh, uh, SWRD Bandar, for that matter. We all know that, you know, these people indeed lived. I mean, there are people who met them and who, you know, lived with them, you know, shared their, their experience with them and so on. But that would not prevent us from uh, understanding this as certain mythologically constructed characters. For example, I can analyze Rohana Vijayavira, Velupille Prabhakaran, or SWRD Bandaranaka, and even Mahindra Rajapaksa, you know, who is, who is you know, still living. As, you know, the mythically constructed, you know, through uh, mythified uh, uh, persons, mythified characters, right? And uh, so that's the that's important thing. Right. Mm -hmm. So the, okay. therefore, the myth is a particular way that we, we try to understand it, particularly in the case of uh, history. So this is extremely important. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about uh, what we saw in a previous slide about the traits of uh, yeah. Yeah. myths. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, this yeah. one. Yeah. No, well, I. Uh, uh, yeah. So this is very important because you know the when you try to. Uh, so the, I mean, what do we basically uh, do, you know, in uh, when we are trying to uh, do history, right? What does it mean by doing history? You know, doing history means you know the practicing history. You know, I mean, I'm considered to be a you know trained historian. So you know, that's my that's my profession, right? I may, you know, I studied about, you know, as a matter of fact, I studied the Dutch period in Sri Lanka, right? So that I, 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 I engage in history, right? What does it mean? It means that, you know, that we are trying to make sense of certain things, right? And then, so here, as you see in this uh, slide, so there are two, uh, two traits, you know, the two factors, right? Time, space, and identity. So what we do basically, uh, you know, one of the important things that we, we are doing when we are when we are historicizing things, you know, we are we are trying to understand things historically. That you know, the we are uh, we are you know imposing you no know, these. Uh, I mean, so we, you have to take, for example, a particular historical moment, right? Particular particular moment in the past, the past moment, whatever it is. Let's say the moment A that happened, maybe. maybe 2000 years ago, right? Whatever. Because it's only our the Hadi the Hagdar Kaling in the So then, what we what 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 we have to do is that you know that you have to give them a temporal meaning. So when that happened, when that happened, you know that you have you know that you have to chronologize, right? So in this era, you know, in the in the age of Roman Empire, in the, in the era of you know. Uh, in the era of Dutugamuno, in the era of, you know, I mean, uh, the Buddhist era, Christian era, and, you know, the, you, you have to, you know, right? So that you have to understand in terms of a particular time con uh, context. So then, so you have to, you have to locate it in a particular spatial context. You have to say that, you know, this happened in Indian Ocean world, this happened in Sri Lanka, this happened in India, this happened in South India, this happened in Kerala, this happened in Pandya Kingdom, this happened in Chola Kingdom, this has been, happened in Rajarata, within Rajarata civilization, you know, I mean, all these terms are spatial terms, it refer to a particular space, right? And then, so you have to give a particular identity to those events. The meaning of it, what is the substance, right? 
so then how do you do this so you have to you know you have to you know you have to invent certain terms you have to invent certain concepts so when you say that you know this particular thing happened in sri lanka or this particular thing happened in south india what does it mean so it is something that you know we can make sense at the moment right so the i mean when we say that you know the when you say uh, the vijay and a group of people landed in sri lanka what does it mean you know in sri lanka I mean you know you are, you are you are trying to impose a particular uh, special category that we are using now to a kind of remote past right so and at the same time so you you at the same time you that you know temporary you know the 6th century bc right so can we say that you know the i mean i mean suppose that you know that that something that actually happened did they know that you know they are landing here in the 6th century bc or whatever right so that is something that and also we can you know uh, we we may link with the for example as a matter of fact we link the vijaya's arrival with buddha's parinibbana so that's a kind of temporal you know right link right so these are and and then you have to give that particular event a meaning yeah that's that's how you know sri lanka and the the the, the sinhala settlement started right so that, that's a that's a particular identity identity which link for example so the uh, i mean in this case the i mean the, the case of vijay story so that particular link you know we connect with us is linked with to our identity right so i mean yeah. there is a kind of substance in this i mean you, you have these three important aspects time yeah. space and identity right yeah. so that's yeah. why uh, you know i mean basically uh, the when you are doing you know without doing this thing you can you can engage in you know the i mean producing historical knowledge right so then this is this is what i mean by mythification right so then you can ask the i mean there are two questions you know that i mean there are there are some people you know for example if i say that when we say sri lankan history okay sri lanka itself is a mythified uh, mythified notion you know there's no such uh, term you know so then this may be challenge this may be challenge if you uh, yeah uh, uh, okay uh, right so this may be challenge and you know the argue that no 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 okay uh, the, i mean even in early uh, civilizations there are sense of you know the singhala dwipa lanka dwipa dharma dwipa and you know the, these are these are early terms you know early concepts right so this is something that you know i mean not not uh, uh, yeah of course you know the i mean even in india the in every civilization so there is a, there, there are special identities right for example in ancient india so there was a concept called bharata varsha the bharata varsha mean the you know so that is the kind of uh, the i mean that bharata varsha ancient notion of bharata varsha includes uh, not only the present day nation state india but also you know the various like coming under pakistan bangladesh and you know nepal uh, to a certain extent and so on right so this larger area right so this uh, but you know i mean there were there were early you know certain special categories but you know the i mean there's a kind of mediation there's a kind of you know the engagement from the side of the producers of historical knowledge and they they also change from so, time to time right yeah 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 they they also change they, they also change from time for example you know the i mean take a kind of extreme example that you know that you say that when you say history of pakistan right i i have no idea as to how uh, history start in uh, pakistan but as a matter of fact we know that pakistan you know in before uh, 1947 the pakistan did not exist no the, exactly I mean, Yeah. and recall pakistan did not exist right but you know most probably they would not i mean i i don't think that they start their historical narrative from 1947 so 
So no, they, not at all. Maybe you know, maybe may, may going down to the the Hindu the civilization, Harappa, industrial civilization, and so on, right? But we know that you know the Pakistan um, was not a right a special category at that time, right? But you know, I mean, but that, that's that's unavoidable, right? So that is that is something that you know, right? So yeah. then, Nirmal, I want to I want to ask another question there. Yeah. Interject you and ask you yeah. another question yeah. there. You were also talking about different levels of myths, mm -hmm. like um, primary myths and secondary myths. Mm -hmm. Can you explain a little bit about what what these primary and secondary myths yeah. are? Yeah, yeah, that that's a very important question. You know, the I mean, uh, so this uh, the demarcation between primary uh, myths and uh, secondary myths, and actually that's something that I I, I invented because. By, by using this uh, famous um, classification of, uh, you know, the I mean, uh, by conceptual classification by Roland Barth, uh, it's, it's, it's a conceptual uh, differentiation between uh, primary level of signification and secondary signification. So that's, uh, um, and the, how, how meanings are created. And uh, so, the, well, the, uh, the, by primary, uh, level of mythification, I loosely refer to uh, the situation that we I just discussed, right? So then, when when we are trying to make sense of a particular historical moment, particular moment that is considered to be a historical moment, I mean maybe 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 ten years back or fifty years back, hundred years back, thousands years back, ten thousand or whatever, right? Right, so the when we are trying, you know, we, we are left with, you know, that we are confronted with a particular historical moment, right? So the so let's say that you know that we let's say uh, in in uh, in third century BC we find that you know so there is a there is a kind of uh, so new new kind of uh, social reality emerging you know let's say buddhism you know i mean the buddhism began to start right right so that it is something that we have to make sense of how do how are we trying to uh, trying to make sense of you know we, we have to explain this right and then so we uh, we are trying to invent certain right so there i mean so then we write history of buddhism in sri lanka right for example now actually I mean, the, 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 this is indeed exists, for example, scholars like uh, uh, the, the, the uh, E.W. Adhikaram, you know, Valpola Rahul Otero, and, you know, there are a number of scholars who wrote about, you know, who wrote about history of Buddhism in Sri Lanka, right? So that is, that is something, you know, I mean, they are very, you know, scholarly people, and so they are, they are I mean, so there's an empirical basis of what they are saying, but they, I mean, when they say that you know the history of buddhism in sri lanka so they are making use of modern uh, spatial categories at least the term sri lanka or the ceylon you know before, before uh, you know uh, sri lanka was officially in that, that also important that also important you know the, when a historian wrote before uh, 1972 so they said history of ceylon then later on, history of Sri Lanka. What does it mean? You know that you are using the modern terms to understand. You know, that is unavoidable. That is unavoidable, right? But that's why it's, that that's what I say. You know, as a kind of that also important. That also important in understanding. But you know, I I I would uh, classify it as a primary level of uh, mythification. Then there's a secondary level. Secondary level is about you know the the content let, let's tentatively call them content based you know uh, myths right okay so that's what yeah. i am going to discuss in the next part right mm -hmm. as yeah. you know that's a, the, i mean in terms of uh, you know five you know mythical stories right okay. so these are the most problematic uh, aspects right so there are certain stories you know uh, Whose, uh, whose factual and empirical basis are not very, not very um, clear, but you know, 
their existence is partly proven and you know there's a tradition of you know the for example the the tradition has informed us mm -hmm. their validity so, for example yeah so why don't we discuss why don't you give us some concrete examples yeah. of uh, secondary myths uh, oh. from sri lankan yeah. history yeah? well i i i have i i have uh, i have five of them mm -hmm. uh, so the, the i consider these five are the basis of uh, the ancient history of sri lanka right mm -hmm. so these five are the first is of course very important story of uh, buddha's visit to the island you know there's a there's a there's a belief that you know buddha visited the island three times right so this is a this is a kind of uh, i mean uh, the story that you find uh, in chronicles right uh, the, including uh, mahavansa and deepavansa right and so this is a story that we we believe right and that that that's the first one the second one is the uh, the arrival of vijay and his uh, his group you know i mean you see this vijay kueni katha both and you know right uh, the uh, i mean popularly known as vijayagamane right and uh, so that that also i mean the central um, origin myth origin you know myth of you know settlement the origin of you know central myth on origin of settlement foundation of settlement in sri lanka uh, particularly in mahavansa and many other chronicles right so then uh, the third one this panduka bay story the panduka bay story uh, this of course um, uh this of course uh, is the you know the myths about you know the, the foundation of the anuradhapura particularly you know the anuradhapura let's say the, i would I, i would call it anuradhapura city state right the anuradhapura the i mean the most of the the state formation in you know pre modern period da uh, you know centered on cities mostly walled cities right like greek uh, cities right so that's the third one the fourth one is uh, the one that i mentioned earlier also this uh, mahindagamane the the bringing buddhism to the island the mahindagamane right and then last but not least the dutugamunu and elara story right so these these stories uh yeah as i mentioned earlier when i say these uh, these are myths so there may be a lot of uh, question marks right so the i mean there may be even some you know uh, mainstream you know well uh, i mean recognized hist uh, historian who don't agree with me when i call yes. them as myths they would say that you know the, i mean they have uh, they have uh, indispensable you know uh, uh, you know empirical evidence and so on right and so therefore you know it is it is unjustifiable you know it's not uh, justifiable to claim this and this but but my main argument is that these stories these stories even you know in in, uh, in the form that we found particularly uh, the i mean well i'm 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 mainly talking about the great chronicle the mahavansa when you the way you find them in the mahavansa they function you know they they uh, they play you know they there is a particular function for each of these stories the uh, this uh, the three visits of a buddha is a clear uh, Uh, it has a clear function you know it, there's a purpose there's a purpose as to why this story is presented in the form that it has been presented right right and so it's a, it's about it's it, it's to is to send a message to the reader to those who read them those who you know listen or listen to the mahavansa stories and so on right so the there's a kind of you know i mean uh, it says that you know it the clear message is that this land this land belong to those who propagate buddhism 
So that's the simple, clear-cut message. So there is a kind of uh, exclusion of certain, you know, living categories. Living categories mean, I mean, mean, mean you know, particularly yaksas, right? So there is a there is a kind of clear uh, exclusion of yaksas, you know. I mean, we can read, we can, if you critically read uh, these mythologies, you know, in, the, in these mythologies refer to the, you know, the human that lived in Sri Lanka when a particular outside migrants came, right? And then, so there's a, there's a, there's a very systematic process of excluding them discarding you know even depriving them uh, even a human fundamental human existence right and then this, this this doing so by claiming that this is the land of the buddha right so nirmal there is also an argument that this kind of exclusive thinking started in the 19th century with the colonial knowledge and uh, how do you also uh, take that no. perspective no, no, and, well, uh, that, that, that's a kind of uh, misunderstanding, I think. Well, you know, there are different modes of uh, inclusion and exclusion, right? So that's that's the thing, you know, I mean, yes, of course, in 19th century, so there is a particular mode of inclusion and exclusion started. But that doesn't mean that, you know, the inclusion and exclusion was not a part of uh, early historical representation. I mean, when you when you read uh, when you read Mahavansa, when you use Mahavansa, so the inclusion and exclusion. I mean, it cannot be avoided. Right? Mm -hmm. So that it is there. So that has a clear function. And likewise, if I you know just uh, you know uh, go further, all the other uh, all the other myths, for example, Vijaya myth, it has a very clear function that you know it 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 it, it informs the reader or the listener as to why this island was, uh, you know, uh, become, you know, uh, the human settlement of the island was inaugurated, started, right? And again, you know, that you see the exclusion of yaksas, right? And so, and also it, 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 uh, it give the, uh, uh, authority uh, to a particular group of migrants, particular group of people, those who came from North India, right? So, I mean, it has a function. And then, so you have the Panduka Abhemi, they explain as to why, uh, as to why this Anuradhapura state was, uh, you know, constructed. And then, uh, and then, uh, 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 you know the Mahinda Gamana story. It's a. It, it's basically a mythical representation of how this Mahavihara tradition was inaugurated. I mean, so the, I mean, this was written in uh, sixth century, no? Uh, about uh, yeah, sixth century A.D. Right. So at a time when this Mahavihara was, you know, will establish uh, monastery and so on, you know, it's a very politically powerful, right? So how that, uh, you know, how this Mahavihara became so powerful, and that, that explains, so that legitimizes, that author, uh, the, the, that, that legitimizes the, the, the Mahinda Gamana story, legitimizes uh, uh, this existence. And then Dutu so, Gamana yeah. Yeah. So Nirmal, it's very interesting to go into the details, yeah. but I also want to sort of bring our conversation between the two of us to some sort of a closure and open up the dialogue uh, for our attendees as well, so that they also get a chance to ask questions from you. Um, but my final question to you would be in that sense. So in this situation, what do we do? So how do we approach history in a constructive way, knowing that when you try to historicize a certain event, you also mythify it unavoidably, if you yeah. accept that as you propose. So what's the way we can engage with history constructive? Yeah, there are two ways. Mm -hmm. The first, uh, first one is through, uh, through uh, critical and deconstructionist approach. Right, so that's that's basically what I'm trying to do, you know, historical criticism, 
right not necessarily trying to you know the develop an alternative narrative but rather than you know the critically question the how uh, the existing narratives are constructed right mm -hmm. and uh, uh, you know in what way you know the what are the political and ideological biases right so the i mean how um, and uh, you know the i mean this even the sources the the when you and as you, you you mentioned about 19th century then the, i mean there are a lot of changes occurred in 19th century but 19th century historical constructions also based on early sources for example you know the mahavansa was there no mahavansa was not completely invented by you know the, i mean uh, they brought to the light you know by you know the various people but it was there no it was written uh, long ago right there was some you know i mean there was a tendency that you know the the what you find in mahavansa was uncritically made use of uh, by the you know the later historical you know the i mean interpreters right so the uh, uh, by way of engaging in critical historiography you can question these things i mean like what uh, uh, gc mendis did in the case of uh, in the case of uh, mahavansa Uh, and uh, like what uh, uh, professor lesli gunardana did in the case of various you know myths like you know the buddha's uh, three visits and so on right so we can you know we can sort of deconstruct history we can you know reconstruct the existing historical text right so that's one way to do that i mean that's why you know for example you know that there are a lot of you know the i mean the the dominant narrative that we are using mostly Uh, inherited you know in terms of the scholarly tradition from 19th century notion of history i don't know if we have time we can discuss it later on but so there are a lot of uh, uh, there are a lot of critical traditions like for example you know the french annals tradition where uh, famous scholars like uh, fernand brodel try to kind of you know this uh, understand this space and time factor in a different way through especially through his uh, uh, concept the long durée i don't know whether i pronounce uh, you know the french word properly the long durée you know right uh, so i mean that's a kind of critical way of uh, approaching uh, history but you know as uh, i mean the you can do that you know in uh, i mean in universities with advanced level students and you know the Uh, the the critical scholars and so on but you cannot do this with uh, ordinary people no ordinary people no oh school children so we we are basically talking about teaching history no right when you exactly. teach history particularly for young children maybe you know uh, i think maybe from grade uh, the age uh, age 6 uh, to 15 or so right so at this level so you cannot uh, you cannot teach critical history right and then i think you need a kind of alternative way to you know uh, use this mythification right exactly exactly and then uh, so the myth has uh, myth has number of function mm -hmm. uh, one of the i mean if i come to one of the biggest problem that we are facing in in in, in sri lankan Uh, you know i mean uh, historical consciousness today that you know the history has become a kind of uh, uh, you know the charter of right uh, for ethno religious very narrow ethno religious ideologies and ethno religious yeah. political projects right mm -hmm. so in, yeah. in other words we the historical knowledge is being used to divide the our community right and uh, so that is exactly what you know we are trying to uh, you know the unravel the understand you know in this history and community project that you mentioned with yes nine university yes. students right mm -hmm. so th this is one of the biggest you know the political problem that we are facing you know the, uh, in an age we are talking a lot about reconciliation and so on so this historical knowledge play a major role so then mm -hmm. i mean so this cannot be addressed only through introducing critical historiography you know to the ordinary people after all ordinary people do not care about you know this uh, the critical you know historiography so they need stories you know they love stories they they love they love to love history 
right? So we exactly. all yeah. do, right? Yeah. And then what does it mean? So then, you know, the we have to understand the gravity of the, you know, of this, uh, you know, the, the secondary level myth that I mentioned, right? So that's, uh, I mean, that's where, you know, my solution is to, uh, that's uh, my solution, my proposal is to invent good myths, yes. right? Exactly. What I mean is that, you know, the, I mean, for example, can't we, can't we teach uh, the Dutugamunu Elara story uh, not in a way that promote hatred among Sinhala and, you know, uh, Tamil communities, but can't we do that you know, to promote, uh, you know, sort of uh, 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 the coexistence and, you know, uh, yeah. understand each other and yeah. right so that yeah. we can do so, the same in relation to yeah. you know other stories yeah. and, and, but mm -hmm. that, that is particularly important when we teach history to small children exactly yeah so i think nirma thank you so much i am going to wrap up on that very uh, pertinent question because i've seen that uh, we've already got our uh, attendees raising questions and I would really like to give them an opportunity to raise questions. So just a, another note, uh, we are open to questions and answers there now and uh, we have already received three questions. So I'm going to invite all of you to please uh, type in your questions in the Q&A box and not the chat box because uh, Q&A box is easier for us to follow and uh, you are invited to raise questions in Sinhala, Tamil or English, whichever the language you prefer. And uh, we also invite you to indicate your name and where you are based so that we sort of understand where you are coming from. And Nirmal can answer your question a little bit better if you like, but you can also raise questions anonymously. So Nirmal, I'm going to take one question uh, that we will, um, uh, that is, that's already there. Um, it's called, can you please tell us more about the existence of Mahayana school of Buddhism in Sri Lanka in the past and its erasure from the country's history at present? So that's one of the first questions that came. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, as a, you know, I mean, my, uh, I have to, you know, admit that, you know, that I'm not the best person around to, you know, answer this, this question, but I can, I can give you a kind of background uh, to understand, you know, the, to, uh, to come to terms with this lacuna, you know, this, this, uh, the, this, this erasure of, uh, you know, the Mahayana tradition from, uh, you know, the, I mean, our history of, Buddhism in Sri Lanka. So, I mean, as I mentioned earlier, so that is the that is the fundamental, you know, the function of this Mahindagamana myth. Uh, the our historical uh, narratives, our historical, you know, the classical historical text, uh, including Deepavans uh, and Mahavans, uh, were produced uh, by, you know. Uh, this uh, one particular uh, factions of uh, uh, the the Buddhist establishment in, in in Sri Lanka, right in Anuradhapura. So what we what we certainly know that uh, the Buddhist environment uh, at that time is much more complex and diverse than uh, you know. Uh, this uh, the text like uh, uh, Mahavansa uh, tried uh, to convince us, right? The for example, you know we know that you know the various uh, rulers in Anuradhapura sponsored you know various religious traditions, particularly.
I'm sorry, my connections lost. Uh, yes, you are back. Question. Now we can hear yeah. you, Nirmal. Yeah. Now you can hear you. Yeah. Yes, please continue. Yeah. Uh, so therefore, uh, I mean, it is quite obvious, you know, that was erased because of the dominance of one particular school of thought, particularly the Theravada uh, tradition. But it is quite obvious that, you know, that was not the, you know, the, I mean, the story that uh, the Mahavans uh, provides us, not the whole story about the, the religious life of Anuradha. That, that's, uh, that, that, that's certainly the case. Yeah, so we have about 14 questions now, Nirmal. So let's try to see the ones that are getting prioritized by getting liked by others. Uh, so one of the uh, questions that is most wanted is uh, about your proposal for inventing new myths. Mm -hmm. While agreeing that all history is inevitably mythified, some historical events are clear, instances of hatred and division. How to reinvent this while remaining faithful to what, as far as we know, happened? Imagine someone in Germany many years in the future seeking to reinvent Nazism, avoiding it being seen as a movement of hatred. So I think the question here is about how do we reinvent? Yeah. So. Hello, did I miss something? Uh... Uh, so, I mean, I think it's more than a, que more yeah. a comment than a question, actually. Yeah. No, no, well, uh, uh, I mean, so yeah, I think it's, a, uh, it's a, I mean, it's a more than, I mean, it's a, it's a more of a comment than a question. Mm -hmm. uh, no, what, uh, yeah, what I would like to add is that, of course, uh, so the, uh, I think this is something that we, we really have to uh, discuss at length, how to produce kind of new myths. The new myth is not a not a. I mean, when I when I put it in this way, uh, you know, I mean, some people <laughs> raise their, you know, I, I mean, uh, uh, so it's a uh, would it, would that mean that you know I'm trying to uh, produce false you know historical narratives again? No, that's not what I'm saying, because you know the, uh, I mean, if you look at the uh the range of historical information so the i mean even when you go into the mahavansa the mahavansa is a you know i mean it's full of information right so the i mean uh, so the the you can go into i mean there are i mean mahavansa itself uh, inform us implicitly so there are a lot of you know in history in historical you know thinking we call them unwitting testimonies right so there are a lot of information that the author of mahavansa do not want to convey the for example you know i you know i i, I so this is something that i have written you know in the uh, in one of my ics uh, publication you know the history after the war the, when you look at the Dutukamana story, right? Dutukamana story, even though the Dutukamana story project, Dutukamana are the hero and the Elara is villain, but when you clearly read the Dutukamana Elara story, actually, you know, the Elara is morally more superior to Dutukamana, right? So there is, a, there is a kind of, you know, I mean, there's a kind of serious issue there. So that's exactly, you know, I mean, yeah. uh, the function of, you know. Right. Actually, there's yeah. even a question regarding that, Nirmal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there is one uh, uh, question from uh, uh, Faslan, who is yeah. actually tuning in from our FB live, mm -hmm. FB live streaming. And he's asking, could you please explain how we can use Elara Dutugamu story for coexistence? This is yes. what you're talking about right now. Yeah, uh, yes, uh, that's a good question. I mean, uh, so the, I mean, what I can say is that, Hasini, you are very well, you know, aware and you are very much part of that project too. Uh, that's, you know, the Sunil Vijay Sirvardhana's famous text, uh, you know, the, the, screen, the, the, the stage play, Ratnavalli. So that's a kind of uh, effort uh, to, uh, you know, the revisit the Dutugamunuela story. Uh, 
uh, and a kind of uh, you know i mean present us kind of you know the produce a kind of new new version of it so that's not a uh, that's not i mean uh, so one one may identify you know the perhaps you know the one uh, political and uh, you know some group with a particular political and ideological orientation would say that you know the the what i am suggesting is to undermine certain uh, you know uh, existing meanings of the tugamunelara story so that's not exactly what i uh, what i meant what i meant is that you know the i mean uh, what we see is that you know the uh, uh, so there are certain exclusions and uh, i think you know the i mean you if you i mean now actually uh, so the i mean this uh, uh, this story uh, began to evolve in the way that you know we understand now maybe in early 20th century or so right even though it was in the mahavansa but you know as uh, famous the, the well known scholars like indrakirti sirivira has studied and it was in the the particularly in the early 20th century that you know they began to become a popular story but now our historical knowledge about the political reality at that time is much more broader and comprehensive uh, than maybe a, a century ago right and uh, so we can sort of uh, recast uh, this mahavans story into that knowledge right and uh, understand what does it say right and yeah. so then so then you may understand that you know this is this cannot be you know this cannot be understood through the prism of you know ethnic categories mm-hmm. right there is a very similar yeah. question that's coming in this detection nirmala i'm going to throw it your way because i think you are going to give the answer to that yeah. so there is a question about in your experience does deconstructing historical myth change the views of those who are committed to them what is the best way to engage with them so this is about people who really believe the yeah. existing myth no actually you know the deconstruction is not to discard you know the existing meanings you know the to i mean one may you know the perhaps uh, one community may feel that you know uh, this deconstruction you know this uh, the practice of deconstruction is to deprive uh them you know of something that they you know i mean they are uh, they are authentic you know their their heritage right the for example that's how you know for example uh you know i mean dutugamana story is very important it's a kind of paradigm myth of singhala buddhist right the singhala buddhist believe that i mean that's uh, i mean that's uh, that's fundamentally that's how uh you know i mean even now when uh, singhala buddhist rights to sri lanka is established you know the ultimate reference is dutugamunelara story dutugamuna story he is the one you know supposed to uh, unify the island and so on right and uh, uh so the when one try to sort of deconstruct this story the perhaps those who you know uh the the pro singhala buddhist ideologues would try to uh uh you know uh, tell that you know the i mean yeah so the ultimate objective yeah. is this exercise is to you know deprive you know the the singhala buddhist their actual heritage and so on. that's not exactly what i meant i mean the the problem is that you know the now so there is a political challenge that you know the on one hand so we have you know our historical knowledge is much wider right and so there are a lot of studies about uh, the state formation and you know the uh, the pre pre modern you know the political realities you know the, i mean there are a lot of uh, i mean so how do we accommodate mm-hmm. how do we integrate those widening horizon of historical knowledge into our you know the popular historical consciousness Right. Actually, so Nirmal, there are about 
yeah sorry there are about three three questions that is going in that direction mm -hmm. so may i ask them for you actually yeah. group yeah. them so one of the questions is uh, you said everyone loves to love history yeah. but how do we make them also love the multiple narratives that is that mm -hmm. history of us. that's one question the other question is from mario gomez he is asking about uh, the ways people people learn history in school but history is learned from other sources like media and parents mm -hmm. and he's asking which is more important and what is easier to change to promote positive myths so this is again one is about multiple narratives and one is about positive myths how do we promote them and then there is another question that's going in the same direction uh, raised by harshana from lanka deepa he says in this lecture you said about teaching and telling good myths what do you propose to teach them in schools i mean saying to gamanu elara story for good purpose um and critical analysis what exactly are you proposing so this is basically all the three questions are talking about how do we uh, actually do that i think that's the direction in which it's going no that that is that, that is something that you know the we, we have to work on it you know i mean the for example you know the you know that there are a lot of uh, the uh, i mean even in uh, early uh, the part of previous century uh so the do you have famous uh, historical stories uh, written by you know the uh, mari musia singings uh, you know and you know i mean the mainly meant for uh, meant for uh meant for uh, children and also there's a very good uh, you know i mean collection this ape urume our heritage by uh, 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 gc mendis and co-authored uh, you know this uh, professor pekman and it's about you know sri lanka and world history so the uh, and uh, so the we also need to think about it um, i don't have a you know set many you know the i mean particular formula for that but you know the we have to ask uh, certain questions we have to ask what kind of uh, what kind of knowledge you know the what kind of uh, uh, attitudes that we we want to uh, cultivate you know Uh, in the historical consciousness of our community yeah right? exactly so the so that is the that is the fundamental question that we we have to ask mm -hmm. right and then uh, uh, so th it is only then you know the i mean uh, we have to you know i mean yes the uh, the history one may say that his the, i mean past let's say let's talk about past past is neither good nor bad right so i mean you have you know the i think you know the i mean the the wars empire building killing people and you know invading other people's terrains and all that these are part of the historical experience of the past human beings right so the you may have your own uh, moral judgments on them right so and then we have to ask question you know what can we learn from this uh, this uh, experience of past human beings right and uh, so with, yeah so uh, there is an interesting question raised from our fb listener and the shubert uh, he is asking about about uh, again producing better myths so lot of the questions that are coming in are actually about producing how do we produce better myths and andy shubert is asking about fiction historical fiction mm -hmm. so he says i wonder at what point this would cross from history into fiction how would the distinction be maintained or should we as critical historians assume it can't be maintained at all so he's he's talking about the differentiation between history and fiction mm -hmm. so i i mean honestly no, to, to be honest i i don't have a i don't have a very clear answer to that you know but i i understand uh, i understand uh, uh, the question i mean it's a it's a quite a challenging question and i'm not a it's a challenging task uh, you know to say the least right i mean uh, so the the we are actually we are fictionalizing history i mean that i mean now actually is now 
that there is a trend you know in the last 20 uh, 15 20 years that you know the i mean there is a there's a popular trend that you know that you have you know the uh, the the popular films teledramas novels and you know the, about the historical themes right so it is uh, uh, it is catering to a particular kind of you know the popular mentality and it it uh, it promote a particular kind of you know ideological mindset particular kind of political orientation particular kind of political project and so on right so the i mean uh, uh, so now actually uh, uh, so that these kind of you know historical sentiment these kind of you know the historical projects are being you know i mean they have been tested over the history i mean right uh, maybe not yet but you know i mean the we know that you know the, for example uh, so then now everyone understand you know there are i mean we have to promote certain for example there is a there is a kind of uh, animosity toward muslims and so on right and uh, so we have to we have to reverse that you know trend and uh, so the yeah the question is that you know the uh, how to draw the line between um, the you know the fictions and you know the critical historical scholarship right uh, so that is um, uh, that I would, uh, I would like to, you know, I mean, uh, this and uh, mm, you know, yeah. that you know this uh, the Hayden White's idea about, uh, you know, uh, historical thinking. So he has discussed a lot about, you know, this uh, uh, the disappearance of uh, the early, uh, you know, the division between science and art, you know, particularly in relation to, uh, you know, the historical scholarship. Uh, so, I mean, we need, uh, I think, you know, the, what is needed is that, you know, the, uh, we have to start that dialogue, right? So what is, uh, what happened earlier was that sort of, you know, the, we sort of, uh, we wanted to deconstruct and, you know, the, I mean, uh, the popular myths and, but we produce nothing, right? The, we try to deprive you know, the people of the myth that they consume, but what we didn't give them, you know, I mean, uh, anything alternative, yeah, you know, right. So that's what uh, that that's a political challenge, right? So that's a political challenge. Mm -hmm. so, uh, Nirmal, there is an interesting question uh, about what role can museums play in this project of bringing people together. So do yes. you see that as relevant to what you're talking? Extremely important, you know, the, the museums. I mean, those are the, those are the places that, you know, the, I mean, we can use, uh, I mean, uh, the, I think, you know, the, I mean, you have newspaper articles and all kinds of the things, you know, the, I mean, uh, the particularly the school children make use of these spaces, you know, the, like museum, museum. And so therefore, you know, the, the curating a museum is an extremely important thing. And, you know, the, we have been discussing uh, these things and uh, um, the recently that, uh, I mean, uh, I think, you know, that I mean, when you, when you go to a museum, you know, the, I mean, the existing museum, so they, they are, they are not, they are not quite serious about these things. So they are, uh, so, uh, the, you uh, so they are serious about you know the outward beauty of you know things but you know the uh, the substance the substance are usually you know the i mean the dominant ideologies dominant narratives are uh, naively reproduced even without knowing the gravity the importance even if they you know i mean the, i know that you know that there may be certain people uh in terms of you know their attitudes towards uh, you know the, the burning political issues and so on so they have a kind of different kind of uh, attitude but when it comes to promoting a particular historical myth so they just follow the already established you know the i mean uh, uh, pattern of thinking without seriously thinking about it 
you know without understanding you know that that that's that's a that's a final you know the thing that i want to convey to understand the historical knowledge as a kind of terrain of ideological battle right so this is not a this is not an innocent you know i mean uh, terrain you know i mean they are very political ideologically politically charged terrain and so therefore so uh, they are meaningful and so they create a lot of you know i mean uh, they they shape the popular mentality right mm -hmm. so they you have to question the very basic as to what kind of mentality that you want to cultivate among uh, among the people among children among you know the adults and you know i mean exactly. those people, yeah exactly uh, nirmal i'm i'm struggling with time to accommodate all the questions that are being raised there are some very interesting questions we have about 15 minutes more uh, with 11 open questions but i'm trying to uh, ask as many as possible there is a student from geneva studying international affairs who is seeking your guidance she says uh, she or he says uh, uh, we know that journalistic work contributes hugely to the mythification of history what journalistic resources would you recommend sri lankan but also students from abroad to inform themselves about Sri Lanka, its history and its ongoing social, political and economic problems. Would you want to, I mean, I think that's a quick and easy question if you have some resources on top of your mind to answer. Um, uh, yeah, well, you know, the, I mean, I, I think I, I missed something. Uh, uh, basically resources that uh, students can look in if you if there is a book on top of your mind that you would highly recommend uh, for what you've been talking about uh, asking well i uh, i i mean i i cannot recommend one particular book though of course you know there's i mean for example you know the harshana ramukwal has written uh, uh, you know about his uh, recent work on uh, you know the, the authenticity right uh, and uh, uh, yeah uh, maybe we can yeah, we yeah. you can think of it and get yeah, back yeah, to yeah. I, 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 you know i mean i, I yes. cannot okay. quickly uh, respond then, to that but you know yes. the, i mean you she can you know the contact me and actually the i mean yeah. exactly yeah. exactly so um the next question is when you go through these kinds of critical arguments on myths do you get any possible support from other historians and what are the steps you take forward to practically to construct and reconstruct history as a uh, as a historian no i think you know this is uh, i mean there is a critical tradition you know i mean uh, uh, so I, I think that's one question uh, here, which I can see from Nadine. Nadine, Nadine. Uh, would you mind elaborate on how G.C. Mendes critique Mahavansa? And you know, the, I mean, I, so the, I think this uh, this questioning uh, the mythical foundation of early chronicles uh, mostly started with uh, uh, G.C. Mendes, and uh, uh, so. From then on, so there are a number of scholars. Uh, you know, the you had uh, uh, the Lakshman S. Pereira, Leslie Gunardana, and you know many others. So I mean, so there is a uh, there is a very important critical uh, tradition, and but now you know now actually so uh, at the moment there is a problem. You know that's when the old generation is gone. So now one of the problems is that you know the historical. Uh, so now actually uh, the the one of the problems that we are facing today is that uh, the historical knowledge is produced particularly for uh, for uh, you know popular audience, not by trained you know historians, not by you know the trained students of history. But, you know, I mean, by others, you know, anyone can, you know, I mean, write, write history. And then, you know, the, I mean, historians may be called for, you know, to get some, you know, views. And so they are sort of um, uh, they're articulated by not a, 
not a very trained groups of people you know i mean the, the one of the best example is that you know how this uh, ravana myth is popularized these days right and so therefore there is a need for uh, particularly young uh, politically and ideologically um, uh, conscious uh, scholars uh, to uh, uh, to be serious about i mean to understand the, the gravity of the issue you know the importance of uh, you know uh, addressing this uh, you know the historical uh the issue of historical uh, you know, consciousness okay okay uh we have a few more questions and time for a few more questions uh there is uh, darshi from university of colombo uh asking about uh young audiences but still at a very young age even for grade 10 Uh, we can still train school students to question the myth don't you agree so she wants to ask you about actually a little bit about methodology of teaching i think uh, well you know i think uh, um um uh, yeah i think you know the rather than uh, uh i think at that age perhaps uh, you know i mean it, it's a, it's a it's a very serious thing you know i mean uh, it's it's really a difficult uh, question to answer uh, but i uh, i understand what uh, darshi is saying uh, but you know the, i mean what i'm uh, what i'm what i would try to do with uh, that age group is to you know widen their you know the the horizon of their historical knowledge to bring in more more information uh, about you know the i mean uh, the rather than you know the producing very concrete you know counter mythologies right uh, i mean the by bringing more and more information uh, you know so then perhaps uh, yeah so then darsha has a point you know the by doing so we may be promoting you know uh, sort of uh, uh persuading them to you know think about what they believe critically so in that sense uh, you know darshi is right you know the i mean uh, but but at the same time the the usually the popular mind um you know i mean what i'm saying is that non scholar mind need some you know the complete ideas right so the you know as a as a sort of student of history who try to practice uh, critical historiography uh, if i ask uh, you know a questions you know something related to let's say anuradhapura period and so on i can easily say that you know i don't know about it right if i ask, if someone asks a question as to why and polonnaru civilization collapsed i can say that i don't know but you know the the popular mind cannot be satisfied with that kind of you know question so they need the they need answers the the so is the you know especially you know the children's mind right so the you may be you may be able to persuade the children to question because you know the questioning is very much part of uh, you know uh the learning habit of uh, the children but at the same time you need answers the i mean uh, so they are not only the, the children are not only questioning them but they are seeking answers they are seeking answers they i mean uh this i mean providing answers you know that is where we need the sort of remythification right so first is deconstructing myths right and by way of you know the giving them uh, opportunities resources to question you know the kind of myth that they are consuming and also so the next stage would be to you know sort of uh, i mean take them in the direction of sort of you know the uh, revisiting you know the i mean reconceptualizing and you know that's what i, I, I would say the remythification you know the producing new myths 
Okay. Uh, there is a, a, a question about um, about again uh, excluding, um, and it's about aren't dominant narratives of history used not just to justify exclusion of ethnic and religious minorities, but also women and sexual minorities? So uh, it's a new angle being brought up here about uh, exclusion. Yeah, so the, I mean that's that's obviously the case. I mean. Uh, you know, there are, there are some dominant, uh, you know, I mean, weaves. So they, uh, uh, they, you know, I mean, these stories may be uh, biased in terms of their ethnic composition and, you know, there are, I mean, and also the gender, uh, the content, you know, the gender wise. Uh, so that, that is, uh, I mean, that is definitely the case. And there's no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. Nirmal, I know we are running out of time, but there are a couple of questions and comments about Dutu Gamu. Mm -hmm. uh, I will just read one of the comments because I think it will be interesting for everyone to uh, listen to that. Uh, from Mark E. Bamford, thank you for actually writing. Uh, he commented from the rest of the rest of the rest of Gamunu demonstrated his respect for Elara through building of a memorial stupa and bringing required people to respect. Uh, I think that's a very nice point for uh, talking about. Uh, there is a question also about how to uh, uh, portray this beautifully. So he's also suggesting uh, a resource for better mix because that is a, is a question regarding that also. Is, um, Suggesting Kavi is mine as a person that people can follow. So thank you. Thank you so much for uh, doing that. Um, there is also one more question if you can shortly uh, answer that. Very precisely answer that, Ismail, uh, about Dutuganu uh, story. What is the actual function of the Dutuganu story in relation to the other four stories? Um. Hasini, I, I couldn't, I mean, uh, so there's a communication issue, okay. there's a connection uh, but you know, what, what I uh, understood is that I, I, heard, I, I heard the last part, the, 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 what is the function of the uh, story, exactly. of, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, so the, uh, so you can look at this in two ways, that, that's an extremely good question. Uh, one is, uh, we can ask the question as to what is the function of the Dutugamunu story as you find in the chronicles, in the Mahavansa. And then you can ask the question as to what is the function of the Dutugamunu story, you know, that, you know, I mean, re, sort of reinvented, re-articulated in the late 19th and early 20th century, right? So if you go to the Mahavansa story, you know, that, that is quite clear. It is to explain as to why this Anuradhapura ruling elite, uh, you know, established their authority and you know the how legitimate their political authority. You know, I mean, uh, so I mean, then the, I mean, the, they they wanted to, you know, especially the the, the ruling elite, the royal, the the royalty that you know the. Uh, held the political you know, the dominance uh, in Anuradhapura, so they want to show that they are they are the legitimate heirs of this this state, right? When you when you read through, when you critically analyze uh, the the Dutugamana story, so there is a very conscious attempt uh, to link. Uh, a particular, you know, the ruling line, the, the, the Dutugamunu's uh, line with uh, the Anuradhapura rulers, you know, I mean, the, the, that is the Devanampiri, you know, the King Devanampiri, the, the conscious effort to link Dutugamunu to uh, Devanampiri's line. But this is an interesting effort, you know, the, I mean, the one of the important, uh, you know, uh, piece of information is that when you have only in relation to Anuradhapura line, so the, I mean, there is only, uh, you know, gap is about, you know, the, uh, the, the, uh, the Elara, the King Elara 
ruled 40 years in Anuradhapur, right? Uh, so then, uh, Ilara, uh, Ilara killed Asela, who uh, who ruled about uh, 10 years in Anuradhapur. So there may be, you know, the the gap between the Devanampiris and uh, you know Dutukamuni is some you know something like maybe 60, 70 years. But in between that area, so you have in in in, in Ruhuna, so there is about you know the five generations, right? Uh, there's one king called Mahanaga uh, in Anuradhapura. Is Mahanaga's son is uh, uh, Yatalatista. Yatalatista's son is Gotabe. Gotabe son is Kavantisa. Kavantisa son uh, uh, son is uh, Dutugamunu. You know, there are about five generations, right? So there's only the two generations in Anuradhapura. So I mean. So this this problem is because you know there is a kind of conscious, I mean, uh, effort to combine Anuradhapura with this, uh, you know, the uh, uh, Dutugamunu who came from the south. So we don't know what happened there, right? So that is the 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 function of Dutugamunu story that as you find in uh, find in uh, the Mahavansa is to you know convey the message to the reader whoever is listening to him that you know well this 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 group of people who is uh, you know the ruling anuradhapura has a legitimate you know authority to do so because they they are the legitimate here to you know anuradhapura rulers right who uh, who was there in the old days you know the devanampidis right and so that is a very important thing. So we still don't know who Elara is, right? Elara's identity is, you know, I mean, uh, we, 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 we don't know who is and, you know, right? And so, uh, so there, is a, there is a particular attempt, uh, you know, by, by the author of Mahavansa to convey a particular uh, uh, you know, particular theory, I mean, particular uh, justification uh, for the, you know, the ruling elite of Anuradhu. So that, that, that's yeah. there. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Nirmar, I, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm going to ask you to be uh, uh, mindful of the time because yeah. we, we have a few more minutes to wrap up. And so, yeah, please. No, well, you know, please so you then, when when it comes to 19th century 19th century it's a it's a different uh, different co uh, context so uh, the uh, the challenge of uh, those who sort of uh, revisited this dutukamun story was to you know i mean uh, link it with the the nationalist sentiment so that was popular in you know yeah, the okay. I mean, that that was the function the yeah. 19th century yeah. Uh, yeah. So then, uh, uh, so the was uh, was sort of transformed into a kind of national hero, right? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. I yeah. I think that was a really uh, yeah. sufficient explanation of the function of Dutugamunu. Yeah. So uh, we have about four more questions, but I'm actually going to apologize to those who. Uh, raise them because we may not be able to answer all of them. Um, uh, one is from uh, our Facebook listener, Krishan Rajapaksa. Uh, sorry, but we are not going to answer that. And uh, a couple of other questions by Harsha. Uh, but there is one question I would still take because it, it's an interesting question to end our discussion on. So this is another FB listener, Mahendran Tiruvarnagam. Uh, uh, he's saying, I was sometimes wondering if we can use history only to a certain extent in finding answers to contradictions that plague our societies in the present. Is there a point where we need to ignore or put aside history and refrain from invoking it uh, as a basis for solution? So here is an interesting thought to end yeah. the conversation. So he's, he's asking whether should be well, you know, I, uh, I, not I, take this. I would, I, I would love to do so, even if you know that deprive me of my job. But you know, 
unfortunately you cannot you cannot avoid you know because you know the you you are confronted with you know the i mean as i mentioned at the very beginning of uh, this conversation that you know the i mean the memory is a very much part of our you know our being you know i mean that's a, that's how this uh, the famous essay you know by you know friedrich nietzsche started this compare with a, you know with a cattle you know who forget things quickly but you know the human beings are not like that you know the we uh, we we have uh, you know the memory uh, is very much part of our being right so yeah. therefore there's no way that you know the we cannot get rid of uh, you know historical it's consciousness so the yeah. therefore one way or the other so we have to confront it we have, we have to you know i mean address the issues that are coming from uh, this serious problem of you know the historical consciousness and keep on working on building better better means yeah. that yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no, I mean, actually, you know that right? i mean the, we we have to uh, i mean these are uh, uh, we, we are confronted with the social problems you know the i mean we cannot uh, we cannot uh, delay the building of a better society until we uh, get final solution to certain historical you know the puzzle right so we we may not be able to uh, solve you know the identity of elaro dutugamunu and so on forever but you know the we cannot postpone until then the building of a kind of you know the i mean harmonious uh, society right so therefore yeah, that's why yeah yeah so thank you so much nirmal for actually spending this one and a half hours uh, sharing your very important thoughts about uh, myth um, historical myths and the unavoidable uh, circumstances in which we have to deal with it 